Pink also Aquarius, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury. Here's your weekly word. <clears throat> Starting with the current transit. So the Sun is 11 Virgo, squaring the Moon, 15 Sagittarius, Mercury, 7 Libra, Venus, 28 Leo, opposite Saturn, 20 Retrograde Aquarius, Mars, 8 Gemini, sextiling, Jupiter, 6, retrograde, Aries. We have the full moon in Pisces coming up on Saturday, September 10th. It will be at 17 degrees Pisces. Where does that fall in your chart? It's going to be conjunct my natal Mercury, 14 Pisces, in the seventh house, the house of partnership. Six cards for Aquarius. I've been feeling a lot of tension and resistance for all of the readings lately, including the client readings. I'm feeling this jittery energy. What do you do when you're feeling unsettled, jittery, um, feeling like things are going on around you and it just feels, ugh, what do you do? I meditate my ass off. I do affirmations. I create content. I get in bed with a book or books. I have indulged in retail therapy lately, Amazon. And I'm always creating art. I have over 2,000 designs uploaded to Redbubble. Beautiful start, Nine of Cups, maybe the Copas. Seven of Pentacles, Eight of Oros. Reina of the Oros. No, that's the Reina de Espadas. That's you, Queen of Swords. There's the Bastos, Ten of Wands. Ah, uh, the beautiful Ace of Cups, Ace of Copas. El Colgado, the Hanged Man. Okay. Not really specific to Aquarius, not really specific to this reading in general. I tell clients all the time, I say this all the time, Patreon, my channels, whatever. Anyone can manifest a romantic sexual relationship. It's really not that hard. There are a lot of hungry people out there. Um, and it's common, you hear it again and again and again and again, ad nauseum, that you can't manifest if you're not in a high vibration. That's actually not true. Ideally, uh, we're in the Nine of Cups, the Ace of Cups all the time, but that's not reality on planet Earth. Um, I manifested a life-changing romantic sexual relationship December 2012 when I was at one of the lowest points of my life. I felt absolutely disempowered, disenfranchised, but one night I just lit this pink candle. I guess the moon was waxing. I don't remember and I scrawled on a piece of notebook paper that I wanted to meet a man who had Sun and Capricorn, Mars and Sagittarius, who liked to fish and dance. Two weeks later, December 23rd, 2012, I was finishing up last minute Christmas shopping and I went into the Broadway 5050 in Alamo Heights, San Antonio, Texas. I wanted to get a bacon cheeseburger and a beer. I wasn't trying to meet anyone. Sat down, ordered the burger, ordered the beer in this attractive man approached me and everything I put on that piece of paper showed up in this man and a lot extra. 
So I was not in a high vibration when I manifested that relationship. But if you want to manifest a good, happy, healthy, harmonious, substantial relationship that's going to last, that's not going to rake you over the coals, it is important that you're in the Ace of Cups most of the time. You're at peace with yourself. Uh, you take care of yourself. You don't have to be on a spiritual path, but you have to take care of yourself. Something beyond washing your ass, flossing your teeth. You have to have peace. You have to be centered. You have to be mostly stable most of the time. If you don't, if you have issues, if you have a lot of baggage from previous relationships or from your childhood, you're going to repeat these patterns. You're going to have these problematic dynamics in any of your relationships. Um, you know, you see someone who goes from shitty relationship to shitty relationship and you say, well, if you're in Texas, you say, oh, bless her heart. She just has the worst luck luck has nothing to do with it. Um, law of attraction is real. It's valid. We attract more of what we already have. If we're feeling impoverished, if we're feeling yucky about ourselves, we're going to attract people into our lives who will corroborate. They'll say, yeah, you do need some work. You are flawed in this way and that way. The Capricorn was all too eager to tell me exactly where I fell short, how I was flawed. I didn't feel good about myself, and he corroborated that. He confirmed the shitty stories I was telling myself. So, um, if you're feeling mostly satisfied with your life, you're enjoying your friendships, your job, your hobbies, your passions, whatever, uh, and on a day-to-day -day basis, you just you feel good. You, you feel stable. You're going to attract a better quality relationship. So, what I see here is you having a clear idea on what the ideal, optimal relationship looks like, but you're in no hurry, you're in no rush to manifest this. You're taking care of yourself, you're working, you're planting seeds. Maybe you have a journal, a notebook, maybe you've made a list, you've written down, this is what I want to find in my perfect person, in my ideal relationship. These are deal breakers. If he has a cat, if he has a gambling addiction, he's, he's not for me. Uh, if he smokes a pack of cigarettes a day, if he hates his mom, hard pass. So you can have deal breakers and you can have things that would be nice, things you would like to find in this person. He has hazel eyes. Um, he likes to travel. We'll go to Fiji together. We'll backpack across Europe together. We'll uh, modify a school bus together and and drive this bus all over America until the wheels fall off. You know, go crazy with it. Please provide an energetic summation through additional cards. Ace of Wands. Ideally, he'll be really good at the whole sex thing. He'll be a damn good lover. Nine of Wands, over the Bustos. Ideally, he'll have Mars and Sagittarius, or Mars in the ninth house. 
El Diablo. Ideally, he'll be as enthusiastic about sex as I am. So, they just opened the second location of this uh, store in San Antonio that I've been going to for years. This location's a lot closer to the house, so that's good. I was going to go to the grand opening, but I didn't. But it's, it's good to know that that store is down the road for future reference. So until you manifest this ideal relationship, maybe invest in some toys. You don't have to have batteries anymore. They have USB cords. You can plug them into your computer to recharge them, so that's good. With spirit, the universe, aliens, angels, spirit guides, uh, would you like to tell Aquarius anything else? Six more cards. A lot of resistance. the letters. We have to find paradise, Eden, in ourselves before we can find it with someone else. I strongly believe that. La justicia, justice. Three of the worlds, three of pentacles. Cinco de Bastos, five of wands. El Ermitaño, the hermit. No rush. El Cogado, hangman. No rush. So we have the most spiritual axis in Western astrology, Virgo, Pisces. Do a deep dive. I talk a lot have talked a lot at this channel, at Siren Taylor, Patreon, about the keys to sinistry. Eventually, I'll write a book. If you look at nothing else but the moon, Mercury, your chart ruler in its tightest aspect, that's really all you need to know for sinistry. You don't need to fuck with psyche and the Sun and Eris and um, Chiron, Mars, Venus, I mean you can, uh, but if you have a complicated chart like mine, if you have a chart that's all over the place, you really have no choice but to zero in on what's the most important. So the Moon, that's our pain body, that's limerence, that's our emotions, feelings, daily habits and routines. If you're going to co-create the Ten of Cups, the Four of Wands, with someone, the moon is pretty damn important. You see these couples that you two, uh, where they're both vegans, you know, they're, they're both vegans and they're uh, making a tiny house together or whatever. So their moons are probably uh, in pretty decent aspect, you know. Because if you're a vegan, that's part of your diet. And you're building an entire life around you being a vegan. For a lot of what goes beyond food, what they eat, they have this whole ethos, ethos, this vegan ethos. You know, no animals can be tested, uh, no leather, no shoes, whatever, no leather shoes. Anyway, uh, it may not work long term if you're a raw vegan and the person you're sharing a bed and a life with is an omnivore. They just eat anything, everything. Or if you like to meditate your ass off and you're a Luddite, you're a bibliophile, you like books and you're with someone who 
is constantly in the noise. They're always on social media, or they have this big ass television that just dominates the den, and then they have a big ass TV in their bedroom. You're going to clash. You can look to the moon for that. Um, Mercury is how we communicate. Why do most relationships fail? Because communication is shit. So it's it's good to be with someone where you're not constantly fighting and misunderstanding each other. Mercury square Mercury. Um, your chart ruler and its tightest aspect. So for me, I've got Virgo rising. Mercury rules Virgo, so Mercury's my chart ruler. The Titus aspect, my Mercury makes, and it's in my seventh house, the house of partnerships, so it's especially important. My Mercury makes a very tight square to my Saturn at 13 Gemini in the 10th, the house of Capricorn, which means I take communication very seriously. Um, I tend to judge people who don't have integrity with their word. Um, if someone says they're going to do something for me or they're going to show up at this time or whatever and they renege, they flake, that really makes me think less of the person. Um, it's hard for me to respect someone who does not have integrity with their word. So, also, a thing I talk about is mirror aspects. If you have a chart like mine that's extremely complicated with tight squares, um, I've got a grand mutable cross, so squares, oppositions, you're not going to do that well probably with someone who has a very easy chart. One example, say, so I've got Sun and Venus and Aquarius, and I've got um, Virgo rising, Virgo moon. Say there's this man who appeals to me on many levels, but he has Sun and Aries, Leo rising, moon and Leo. That's a pretty simple chart, just going by the astral combo that's all fire. Um, someone who has a lot of fire or a lot of extroverted energy in their chart or a lot of trines, a lot of sextiles, it's going to be hard for me to relate to that person. Um, I've got Mars square Pluto and I've noticed that a few of my exes have Mars square Pluto. So that's a mirror aspect. Uh, if you have Mercury square Saturn, you're going to be very serious when it comes to communication. So you might not do that well with someone who has um, Mercury trying Jupiter. That is very different than Mercury square Saturn. So I just I was thinking of that when I saw the Five of Wands. I thought probably if you have anything in Aquarius, you're going to prefer a partner who challenges you in some way, someone who stimulates you, not just sexually, but intellectually. But I see you manifesting this relationship and being absolutely in no rush. You want the ideal. You want the optimal. That's what I see. That's what I have. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Peace out.